This video is about finding the electric potential due to a conducting sphere. In the previous videos, we have found the electric potential by saying that the total potential is equal to the sum or the integral of the potentials due to each individual piece. However, this is a sphere of charge. And for the sphere of charge, if I want to find the potential outside here, it becomes a very complicated integral because the distance from this point on the sphere and this point on the sphere and this point on the sphere up here, uh, it's just a nasty integral. So there's an easier way of doing that. And the easier way of doing that is to first find the electric field and then use the work and force relationship which is given to us by delta V, which is the work per charge, is the negative integral of the force per charge or electric field dot ds. Okay, so the first thing we do is find the electric field using Gauss's law. Then we plug this into this equation. And just in case you're confused, for some reason this computer is making my vector symbols over the E and the DS into little weird omegas. But that's what those are. So, a hollow conducting shell of radius A. Conducting shell, conducting means metal, and hollow and shell is kind of redundant, but that means it's air inside, or at least or vacuum inside. Total charge, positive Q on its surface. So to find, just a quick review of Gauss's law, to find the electric field for R greater than A, I draw a Gaussian surface whose radius is greater than A, and I evaluate the flux, integral of E dot dA, over that surface is Q inside over epsilon naught. And for a sphere, remember, it's always E times 4 pi r squared, because by symmetry I can argue the electric field is radially outwards, and dA points radially outwards, so therefore they're parallel. E dot dA becomes E times dA. E is the same everywhere on the sphere, so it's E times the integral of dA, which ends up being E times 4 pi r squared. And the Q inside, this blue Gaussian surface here, is all of the charge on the sphere plus Q over epsilon naught. So just to review, the electric field outside a conducting sphere is the same as if I had a point charge at the center, Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. The electric field for a point inside the conducting sphere, draw a Gaussian surface, this time in red, radius r, and I apply Gauss's law again, integral of E dot dA is equal to Q inside over epsilon naught, and whatever the electric field is here points radially and outward, or inward, I don't know, but in any case it's E times 4 pi r squared, but here's where Q inside, inside this Gaussian surface, there's nothing. There's air, there's vacuum. So therefore the charge inside is zero. So therefore my electric field inside the conducting shell is zero. Not because there's metal in there, but because there's no charge inside here. All the charge resides at the surface, and the metal sphere means that there's no, ch no electric field inside. So outside, I have Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared, so basically proportional to 1 over, R, 1 over R squared, and inside, it's 0. So now that we have the electric field outside and inside, we can integrate delta V equals negative integral of V dot dS, and take V equals 0 for the sphere to be at infinity. So basically, I'm going to integrate from a very far away point into infinity to calculate the electric field. So delta V, or since I'm integrating from zero, delta V is equal to V minus V initial. I'm integrating from infinity, so it's V minus zero. So delta V is V, the potential outside there. And that's negative integral from infinity to R of E dot dS. Now I'm integrating in from infinity, so ds is inward and dr is outward, 
So I have the integral from infinity to r of e, to e dot negative dr. Oops, I forgot the minus sign in front here. So that's the integral. This minus sign cancels that minus sign. That's the integral from infinity to r of e dot dr and e e dot dr negative dr e dot n oh the silly minus sign okay so that's negative and negative here and then e dot negative dr brings in a cosine 180 negative integral from infinity to r of the magnitude of e which is q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared also known as kq over r squared so this is kq over r squared times the magnitude of negative dr which is dr times cosine 180 and this minus and that minus make this a plus and this cosine 180 in here is a negative one and so now I have k and q as constants k q are constant integral from infinity to r of dr negative over r squared because this cosine 180 is this minus sign right here so the antiderivative of 1 over r squared raise the power by 1 I get negative 1 instead of negative 2 and then put the coefficient 1 over negative 1 is a negative 1 so this minus sign goes away and I have kq times 1 over r evaluated at infinity and r so therefore the potential outside this sphere is kq over r which is the same as if it were a point charge that my friends should not be surprising because if you recall the electric field for this uh, radius a shell of charge the electric field is the same as if it were a point charge so it actually makes great sense that we get kq over r for our answer which is the same as the point charge so now if we're integrating to r less than a we have two integrals to do because I have two different electric fields outside it's kq over r squared inside it's zero so I have two integrals the integral from infinity to r turns into the integral from infinity to a of one electric field plus the integral from a to r so the integral from infinity to a delta v is negative integral from infinity to a of kq over r squared dr plus the integral from a to r of the electric field inside which is zero times dr so it's plus negative well the integral of zero from anything to anything is zero so that drops out and this integral is exactly like this integral or this one right here except for the fact that up here the limits are infinity to r and here the limits are infinity to a so this delta v which since I'm starting from infinity is equal to v remember this argument up here the voltage then is um, k q over up here when I had that integral is kq over r because my upper limit was r so now since my upper limit is a the voltage is kq over a and so therefore the voltage is kq over a that means the voltage for any value of r less than a so if I were to graph I don't know if that's one of the questions nope not on this page if I were to graph the voltage as a function of radius here here's r equals a 
its constant at kq over a inside the sphere, and then it drops off proportional to 1 over r as you get farther and farther out. So the voltage for this conducting shell is constant when you're inside and 1 over r when you're outside. Now if you think about it, the electric field inside here is zero, but the voltage is not zero because it does take work. Voltage is work per charge. It does take work to integrate from infinity into the surface of the shell. It takes no more work once you're at the surface to move anywhere you want. So the delta V over delta R is zero, and that's the electric field. So there's no electric field in here, there's no change in voltage in here, but there is, um, there is a non-zero value for the voltage, and that non-zero value is KQ over A.